Welcome, and happy morning to you all. It's another beautiful day out here. And thank you for joining again today. Whether you're here live on the stream or watching later on in YouTube land. Appreciate you so much. Uh, hey, hey, Gonzo. Good day, my man. Thank you so much. We got a sound check. Check. And uh, just another call out, as usual, to super creative individuals who make beautiful music. Thank you so much. Uh, as usual today, we're going to go into a non-Morwin thing. I'm not going to jump into it just yet. <clears throat> we're back from not doing it yesterday. Wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you to Outis Nines, user from Discord, who I mentioned yesterday, but I forgot their username. I'm, uh, <laughs> I forgot their username. I'm so sorry about that. So I wanted to make sure to specifically mention you by name. Um, and it sounded like you were perhaps a stream viewer. So thank you for viewing the stream. Gonzo says, very Linux shirt. And yeah, <laughs> I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, my run GCC shirt. So again, thank you, Outis Nines. Uh, we definitely appreciate you so much. Um, today we'll be looking at uh, update UMOP usage notes. It's come up a couple times in the past week. And um, I just want to make sure that we handle it today, you know, and it'll be in 5.10. Uh, and then a couple other issues to tackle is 5.10. I went through the issues backlog. And actually, on that note, we are, you know, officially below 100. One of the stream goals has been achieved. So congratulations, Gonzo, Hurdrax, and everybody else. Uh, Sophia, who's been helping lately, um, bring up issues and help solve them too. Thank you so much. Um, we did it. So yeah, we'll have to come up with another goal, but I will gladly delete that one from the list. Uh, it feels so good. <laughs> well, yeah, Gonzo says, you're the one who closed them all. Well, yeah, I mean, indeed, but it is always, as always, a collective thing that we all help with, you know, so, um, and, you know, you take down 30 issues, you pr you bring up one more, thank you for filing the issue about Goat Counter, uh, we gotta get that situated, so, great software, Goat Counter. Uh, moving on, though, yeah, we're gonna then, uh, take a look at the CFG generator refactor, and I wanna take a moment, uh, to thank Afain who yesterday helped me unbork my LSP Python situation. Now it all works great, and I no longer get angered by looking at that code. Um, you can, of course, write code without completion and all that stuff, but I don't know. It just helps. <laughs> don't judge me. Uh, this is a thing I've added to the website code base today. We're actually going to check that off because it's in there. And it will hopefully allow people on Windows to edit the files and not have problems with Linux specific line endings, or I should say non windows specific line endings. Uh, I would very much like to get a start on the custom based or JavaScript that will allow user to put a custom based directory. Um, cause that's part of the scope of the CFG generator rewrite. It's going to be in 5.10. So we may very well get a start on that today. And then, uh, as has been the tradition as of late, we'll end the stream by looking at some cool new stuff. Um, in particular, some really neat stuff that uh, Detail Devil, our friend, has shared with us. So, yeah, going to be really great. So, <clears throat> jumping back to the non-Morrowind thing, I just want to call out The Last Isles, which is a project by a close friend of mine, uh, Daniil Baturin. I'm sure I said your name wrong, and I'm so sorry, buddy. <laughs> but this is the website uh, for the project. I'll put it in the stream chat, too, just in case... Y'all want to take a look at it too, but this is a planned game that will be made using OpenMW. A completely original thing, not based on Morrowind at all. Completely uh, free in terms of the code, in terms of the assets, in terms of the music. Uh, hey, Detail Devil, good day. Thank you for joining. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, we're just taking a look at a up and coming non Morrowind game that will be based on uh, will be written for OpenMW, uh, made by a close friend of mine. So, yeah, it's very much in an alpha state, but I strongly encourage you to check out the website and uh, take a look at it and think about you know um, what would you do with a non Morrowind game in OpenMW, right? Like if you had the ability to make a game that's Morrowind, Morrowind but not maybe a little more on the not side as Lua allows us to. Um, yeah, Gonzo points out, uh, takes inspiration from the Elder Scrolls, Daggerfall and Morrowind, follow Arcanum and Gothic. There's there's a certain, you know, thing that I think Daniil and myself too, I'm a kind of a micro contributor here. I he bounces ideas off me. <laughs> um, 
and I've minorly contributed at this point. But uh, people actually played Gothic Gonzales. It's on my two playlist, but it is one of those games that you see people are like, oh, yeah, you know, it's inspirational. I never played it. I have played Arcanum Fallout, obviously a little bit of Daggerfall. None of this thus far. So anyway, yeah. Uh, as sort of OpenMW develops and enables us to... Uh, you know, hey, Fane, good day. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for joining. Uh, De uh, Detail Devil says, Gothic 2 is the best German RPG out there. Whoa, noted. Gotta check it out. I believe they're both on GOG and Steam. So, um, we might have to look at that sometime. But anyway, so yeah, just check out, uh, again, hey, Fane, you're just joining. I'm looking at uh, The Last Isles, which is a project by a friend of mine. Uh, RPG that's in a very early conceptual stage that will be made using OpenMW as an engine. And, uh... You know, so, uh, again, I'll say, you know, try to think about folks out there, you know, what kind of a thing would you do with a, a Morrowind-like engine that's a game not Morrowind, you know? Um, so, yeah, uh, very good stuff. Looking forward to this and also some of the beautiful uh, music that Daniel will be producing. Yes, he's a composer as well. So, yeah, all right. Thank you so much, Daniel, for this. Hopefully he sees this. Uh Cool, cool. And then thank you again, Otis Nines, my friend. All right. So I guess moving right into things, uh, I want to fix the situation we have here with the UMOP usage notes because, again, they've been borked for a minute. And I keep keep forgetting to do something about it. So let's just take a quick look. And I know that happens to be on here. Here we go. <laughs> no usage notes, perhaps because of our format change. So let's take a look. Hmm. Here we go. All right. Well, yeah. So this is um, <clears throat> this is a unique opportunity to just fix it. It's still, as you can see here on the right side, we still have the usage notes in the old format. We used to cram it in there with just the general mod information. Um, we can rip that out, but then also fix it on the way. Um, so let's do that. Let's find out where we should put this. We're gonna do a. Uh, no. Here we go. Right here. Gonna copy paste and I'll keep that there for posterity just so we can kind of have a reference to what was there. Comment it and uh, but we're gonna be writing something new. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's look at the real website for a reference at what we got. I know it wasn't pretty. I looked at it like last week and it wasn't pretty. So bear with me. All right. So how much of this is actually still accurate? I don't know. Let's see. So there is just one pet. There's just one download. And I think what we want to tell folks to do, if I remember correctly, let's just read this real quick here. See if any of it makes sense. Makes no sense. That's going away. Uh, Yeah, we don't need to mention that here. I think we can mention better balance combat stuff. In that mod, there's no need to bring it up, you know, <clears throat> elsewhere. So, yeah, I pretty much don't want any of this. I'm going to come up with something new. All right. Uh, so, indeed, what do we have here? Excellent. Nothing new there. And 
and we'll just take a quick uh, look at the manual, shall we? Read the fine manual, as they say. And this is a pretty good manual. Uh, really good. I really like this changelog here. That's really nice. It's hard to keep track of this kind of stuff. Um, okay, I mean, there's no... There's no real specific installation instructions, so it should be, uh... <laughs> Gonzo. <laughs> yes, that is how we pronounce it. <laughs> he says, is that how you pronounce effin'? Yes, yes it is. All right, well, so... What we have here, then, let's take a look at each one. Yeah. So really, we just want to extract everything. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong here, Gonzo, and any, anybody else. I think what we want to do here is we want to describe what to do with the folder paths, right? Like, I think we should be light on the usage notes and just simply present the right folder paths, and everything will just sort itself out in the end. That's why we're doing this work, after all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, thank you. Gonzo says, yep, I think that's the right way to go. Less is more. And I think if we just present the right information can, in a concise manner and, and give them something they can copy-paste out of the CFG generator, that's going to be the best part, um, then really it doesn't matter. A bunch of words about it doesn't matter. Folks who know what to do can know by looking at the data we present. So, great. I love it. We have effectively written better docs by not writing any at all thanks to the new feature we built. I love that. Um, so, yeah, I guess we're not going to look at folder paths just uh, today, probably. I will do a quick look right now just for posterity. Just so we can see kind of what we're dealing with here. Excuse me, but this is actually a good example. So Morrowind itself, as an example, this is how we represent that kind of stuff. And so if we were going to do, you know, um, an entry here for adamantium armor, you know, we would simply put an extra dir entry, kind of not unlike what you see there. Uh, we would say 00 adamantium armor. We would put what mod list it's on. Pretty straightforward. The, the only painful thing here really is dealing with YAML data directly, but, uh, you know, that's just one of those things. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So, yeah. I feel pretty good about that. So I feel like we will simply present the right folder paths, the right plugin loadout, and everything will sort itself out. Users can realize what's going on as they start to understand. I think providing correct configurations will help people understand things more easily because they won't have to think about it too much, but they will have something there that it, that works right. So I'm going to just put a... Excellent. I love that. I finished my coffee, so if you have not yet, though, please enjoy. That's great. When I was thinking about this earlier, I did think we were going to rewrite it, but it really honestly makes sense to just put the right information here and here. So, yeah, hooray. I love it. <clears throat> All right, um, that way it's officially been seen. Thank you so much to uh, DYNO Dev for calling this out. That's what reminded me to do something about it. So thank you so much. And uh, <clears throat> okay, so next on the agenda, we're gonna not quite jump to this yet, but I did wanna take a quick lo look at our checklist here. And so, this is mostly done. I'd say Herdrax did 90%, 95% of this. So thank you so much to Herdrax. Um, really appreciate you for that. Just got to take a quick look over it and make sure that we have, you know, the right notes for the right mod list and stuff, but it's mostly there. Uh, folder path 
data. Um, I started a while ago. Haven't looked at it yet uh, in a, some time, um, but that's remaining to do, and I'll jump on that at some point. And then, yeah, re-implement the CFG generator, which I hope to do momentarily here. Um, I started to do it a little bit last night. I was looking at the old one. So, And then, yeah, as I mentioned, some JavaScript uh, so people can set their own folder path, right? If you've got, like, the F drive that you put, you know, F, you know, Todd's dreamland folder you can do that if you want um and so what i was thinking today if we got to it or maybe next week on the stream we could simply implement the settings page aspect of it where you could set it and then um when we're polishing up the cfg generator we can actually use the data there in the front end so anyway all right uh i was thinking though we could look at some of these and make sure that we have them in order because as I was reviewing issues the other day, uh, I did note some of these were still needing to be handled. Yep, still needs to be handled, I said. So add a note. Okay. Um, ah, this is, I think, another one that will sort itself out by way of our data reconfiguration here, right? We will just simply show the right thing to people. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there will be no need for a note. So while we're not going to close this one today, it will be closed by 5.10. I like it. Moving on. Tests that fail when we miss a changelog update. That's not one I particularly wanted to look at, but it's worth noting. If you write Python and you like to write tests, talk to me. Okay. Um, this one, nothing really to say here. I'll take a quick look at it. Just that uh, when we launch 6.x, we're going to replace these uh, old MW script based versions with the much nicer Lua versions that don't have such issues. I'm not sure what it is in these scripts that causes this. And this is a very like excellent bug reporting here um, by our friend here. And I'm so sorry if I mispronounce your name. Andre Ribeiro de Cunha. Excellent problem description and yeah it just has to be something in the implementation which is you know not an issue in the pure lua version so uh you know we'll close this by virtue of doing 6.x nothing really to do today oh yeah okay this is one that we can do today uh we do say that the plugin is dirty but actually the data uh bit on the plugin does not reflect that so let's take a look Mask of Dagather. Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, Gonzo, I believe, took care of this already. So thank you, Gonzo. There it is. And so if we go... Whoop. We can actually look at that right now. Mask of Dagather. Needs cleaning now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. I know the problem. <laughs> bug report. Uh, well, we are like on a live bug hunt right now, friends. So let's fix it. It's clean, clean, dirty. What, what does it say there? Plug in me. Right. There we go. Okay. Interesting. So we got a couple things going on here, friends. We are saying plug-in or plug-ins based on if we have more than one. This says give me the mod on the page, give me the plugins. And again, this I talked about this yesterday, the template filter syntax we get here with Django, and it says pluralize. And Django is smart enough to know how to pluralize various English words out of the box. And so you can type plugin, and if there's more than one, it will say plugins. -a. Pretty neat. Um, you can also specify how to pluralize, which I'm doing here. Uh, we are putting a comment, a comma afterwards because it grammatically uh, makes more sense I guess so anyway that isn't working though mod needs cleaning because excuse me 
Oh, interesting. And it's just there. Okay. If we have plugins, we want to say yes or no. It's not working because this doesn't exist anymore. Mod needs cleaning um, doesn't exist anymore. So uh, because we have different database entries for mods and plugins. And what do I, what do I mean by that? I mean... Let's take a walk into the database right now. What I mean by that is we have a mod, for example, Better Robes. It's a mod thing, right? And mods have plugins, mods have folder paths, mods have authors, they have links, they have this and that. But the plugins, and it's worthy of a database entry, right? We have all these attributes that you can see here. Um, some are things that I wrote and other things are just built into Python. Plugins too have a need for similar descriptors. Uh, let's use my own, uh, so plugins, yeah, okay. Oh, don't try this at home. All right, very good. We can grab a plugin like this. So we have a mod, Better Robes. We have a plugin, Better Robes ESP. And now on the plugin, there you go. And so we have that information directly. The point being, we have that information directly attached to the plugin, abstractly attached to the mod, right? The mod knows about having plugins. In this case, this happened to be a good example because there are two plugins. So in this case, actually, I'm, I'm as I'm reading this, I feel like clean is the wrong name for this attribute, right? Because they are clean. They do not need to be clean. So really, I probably should say needs clean. Um, I'll change that with a quick find and replace later on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gonzo agrees. Thank you so much, sir, for speaking up. Definitely. Now that it, <laughs> this is why naming is hard, right? Because at the time when I wrote that, I wanted it to be a shorter field name, and I, it sounded good. But now that I'm actually using it, it makes no sense whatsoever. It's opposite day. So yeah. Um. Anyways, what I want to do then is I want to do a extension of what I did yesterday. We have some logic in here, right? Like. Now, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this in the template, I have to be like, uh, you know, for loop all the plugins, and you know, I want to just keep it simple. And so I want to pass two data points here. Um, I'm going to pass in, and I probably already am passing in plugins somewhere. Um, so I will just have. I will be counting some singular variable that contains the plugins versus. This is looking at the mod, hitting the database with the period, and asking for the plugins. So we might get a slight little performance improvement there um, by memoizing that in the back end. Uh, dynamic page. Okay, mod detail. Here we are. All right. Um, so plugins, we're already giving that one. So yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't try that at home. That's an alt backspace. Yikes. <laughs> a little bit. Sometimes it does what I want it to do here in Emacs, but it really depends on the mode. And in web mode, it just wants to eat the whole line. Yikes. All right. Yeah, spicy Emacs command. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that. Emacs has some commands that it has deactivated by default, and when you use them, it like pops up this screen. It's like, warning, you have used a spicy command more or less and you have to like say I want to turn it on or off and it'll tell you it was bizarre the first time I came across that because I like fat fingered and did the wrong thing and I'm, I'm like at work and I turn to my coworker who is an experienced emac user and I'm like what is what happened and then they explained to me so the end um yeah plugins plural, pluralized I think better robes would be a good one to look at since we were looking at it in the database. That's a nice thing they added, Gonzo says, yeah, you know, actually, um, Emacs is like almost 50 years old. And even though it has some things that may seem bizarre out of the box, there actually has been a lot of thought put into it. 
and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave that for the Emacs extravaganza stream where we just do all Emacs all the time. But for now, uh, okay, so this is a bad example because they don't need cleaning. All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna make them need cleaning arbitrarily incorrectly. Um, hmm, this might actually, hmm, I'm going to do both of them. <laughs> Emacs Extravaganza would be a good conference name, if Fane says. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> also seems like potentially a good band name. I don't know. All right, yeah, so we're just going to fib a little bit in the data for the sake of uh, needing a... A situation to help us out here. Yep. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Don't try that at home either. All right. Very good. So, uh, what I want to see here, once the data gets into the situation that I like it in, uh, excuse me, I'm going to eat a kiwi real quick. So, what I'd like to see here is a plural plugins my specific pluralized form of needs and then we're gonna have to put something something else there too and so I think the easiest way to do this we're gonna pass along another bit of data, which by the way, if you're wondering, what do you mean pass along, Johnny? I don't understand. What we're doing here is in Django, every web page is powered effectively by a Python function. This is the Python function for the mod detail. And what we're doing here is we're just doing some stuff. And then at the end here, we're returning a rendered request with the HTML on the page. Actually, we're sending it along to this guy right here and we can send it data anything we really want right and so that's what i'm already doing here there's other bits of data i'm already sending that we use in the template to do things on certain situations you know um if you're on windows we show you the windows path if you're on linux we show you the linux path path that kind of a thing so now we're just going to add another note here needs cleaning needs cleaning and that is going to complain about that yeah, undefined name needs cleaning. Ooh, and I wanted to note too, something I noticed last night when I was hacking on the couch with my laptop. Really nice thing they did here in um, LSP mode. So you can see what it used to do actually is this. If I zoomed in, it would like run on here and it would be really painful to type with. But actually now it keeps the thing zoomed out while I get my zoomed in text size. Anyway, it was just very jarring to type because my screen is too big when I'm like actually on the couch with my laptop. The resolution is too high. I can't, my old man face can't read the, the small text. So I got to zoom in sometimes and it annoyed me. And yeah, yeah, neat indeed. Like somebody else got annoyed by this and they reported it in the LSP mode team fixed it. So thank you so much to all involved. Now we're going to do here. Um, we're going to say needs cleaning because cleaning is the exception and not the rule. And then we're going to say here now. Oh, that's got to go. <laughs> Just typing this is making my brain hurt, but clean we have to think of as saying needs cleaning and I'm going to just do a find and replace later on on that. Um Plug in clean. Needs clean. And then that way uh, we're gonna we'll break out of the loop. Wait. Trying to see if that's actually yeah, there we go. We're gonna break out of the loop here. We only need to know if one plugin needs cleaning, then we say it needs cleaning, right? We don't need to like we're gonna save ourselves microseconds here, but so be it. Over the years, it'll add up to 
seconds. All right, and so we have our new data crunched over here. We have the HTML rendering the wrong thing still. Why? I don't know. Let's look. Hmm. There we go. That's why. Yeah, that's right, Gonzo. You nailed it. And there we go. Plugin needs cleaning. Yes. Do, do, do. And you know what? Okay, yeah. So eventually, Gonzo and I have been planning this, I think, for a couple weeks now. But eventually, we'll have like some kind of instruction here on how to clean for users of all the big three OSs. And, um, and we'll... Uh, possibly even a video if we can do that. Um, and we'll give a special call out to the fact that Delta plugin magically auto cleans. All right, so I'm happy with that. Now we ha uh, let's go back and look at Mask of Dagathur, shall we? Ah, thank you, Gonzo says. Oh yeah, let me write an issue for that. I think I can do a mock up. Appreciate that so much. Just keep us on track for that. I want to finish the CFG generator rewrite. We'll get that 6.x update out the door, and then, yeah, we'll really focus on cool stuff like that to really polish up the website. And here we go. Look, plugin needs cleaning. All right. So I think it's safe to say we will be handling this one in 5.10. So, yeah, all right, cool. Um, I need to, real quick, before I forget, we're going to... Otherwise, after the stream, I'll go eat food and forget about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, definitely need that because that made my brain hurt way more than my brain was ready to hurt. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, I feel pretty good about that then. We sort of indirectly solved that one by virtue of moving it over. Um, F and F no sitters option. Um, I want to check it my setup. Hmm. I think, did they just remove the sitters altogether from friends and foes? I think that be the case. Let's check the change log. Um, if that's the case, then this is one we can close right now. And there be no need to suggest no sitters because they don't exist. Removed all the sitters. A couple version, yeah, about a version ago. So there we go. As of 1.7, we'll go ahead and note that here. All right. Nice job. Okay, shipwrecks not used by any mod list, still being added by the CFG generator. This will be fixed by 5.10. And this is because the CFG generator relied on packs to do anything remotely intelligent, unfortunately. But such is not the case any longer, as we will find out in a moment when we look at that code. <laughs> be beautiful, simple code. Right, thank you, Detail Devil says, I assume the no-sitters mod is the result of the sit animation from Animated Morrowind. This works without issues for MWSE, but OpenMW requires an additional patch for to fix all sitting animations. That's absolutely correct. Actually, the sitting stuff is designed specifically for the collision and physics of Morrowind.exe. So actually, MWSE, I don't think, is technically required Maybe to run the mods it actually is, but it's the physics of that EXE that it depends on. And OpenMW's physics are completely different and are not accurate to Morrowind physics at all. 
Um, I mean, not I shouldn't say at all, but not in the Todd-tastic ways, right? Um, that make things like sitting work the way that the mods expect them to. Things like Abbott Silt Strider, for example. Um, this is why that doesn't work in OpenMW, because our physics are different from the actual game's physics. 90% um, of things, maybe 75 to 90% of things, more or less work the same, but it's things that are developed for the really like specifics of the old engine. Yep, yep, base game, yep. Thank you for bringing that. That was a good call out, Detail Devil. Yeah, um, it's a shame because on one hand, right, I want to have that behavior, but on the other hand, I like having a modern physics. Like, I can't wait to have the mod that adds Oblivion physics to Morrowind. Like, when I bump into something, and I'll knock it off the table. <sighs> you know, that's going to be awesome. Um, but it's one of the reasons why also that MWSE and the old executable is always going to be something that we want to have around, you know, so... Uh, ooh, on that note, hey, everybody. Um, this is something I wanted to share uh, because I was a judge in the Mod Jam. Um, I There was a couple MWSE mods in the Mod Jam, and I wanted to make sure that I judged those. So check it out. I have MWSE on my Linux setup and uh, with a couple of neat things. So I'm just going to run that real quick here. I think I just have Quick Loot loaded up in here. Uh, I got shaders turned on. I got distant terrain. I got uh, cool water waves and stuff. Um, yeah, very exciting. It's been a long time. I don't think I ever had MWSE working on Linux ever. And uh, I want to take this moment to give a big thanks to Hern Chamd and Magamo, who worked together. Uh, to make sure this kind of stuff works. And the big secret sauce that's needed for Linux users is um, a DLL override to use the MWSE DLLs. And you can see there in the corner, I'm using DXVK. And, um, you know, this is, again, my don't let this be like a judge of the performance. When I'm not streaming, it's quite good. I get in the 40s to 50s frames per second. And, uh, yeah, so here we are. And they got a cool wave thing that I'm really jealous of. You can see the water wave in there. Looks pretty good. Uh, of all the things the vanilla game has that I like, the water. I think I like the new Ripple that we have a lot, but their waves and the, in general the water just still looks pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, so um, just a cool shout out to all my friends that uh, make MWSE mods and use MWSE. Uh, and yeah, we're part of that club too. It's all right. Next up on my list to try is The Joy of Painting. And I'm really looking forward to being able to do something like that uh, in OpenMW. We can probably directly add Image Magic as a dependency, but I don't know. Yeah, that'll be a little spicy because I know that one uses Im Image Magic to do its thing in some way. So anyway, yeah, a little diversion there. Mm-hmm, okay. We were going back to where we were. This one will be fixed uh, because actually we don't use the plugin from that one at all on any mod list. We're now using the, because we mixed JFK, Justice for Cartag, with that, we use the merge compatibility plugin. Oh, yeah, okay. This is another good one from Niccolo. Thank you so much for calling this out. Um, in a nutshell, though, We don't um, suggest the OAAB data plugin, and we should. So um, this will be solved in 5.10. Uh, as I work through the data pads, I will put that in there. Um, if it doesn't make its way into 5.10 because I forget or something, it will for sure be a part of 6.x as we're totally revamping all the things in that one. So this is another one we're not going to act on today. Okay, cool. I think that is all the ones that I actually wanted to look at as a result of me sort of cleaning up the issues the other day. Um, going back a little further, we still have this one, which I think we may need to... Um, this one we may need to report upstream, because I believe MD likes to fix things such as these. Uh, yeah, this one right here. Thanks so much to Andre for taking this screenshot. Um, there's a couple floaters there, so... Uh, yeah, we'll have to confirm. What I want to do is 
That's right. The reason why I didn't reach out to this, I want to um, load saplings with just BCOM and see what it looks like and make sure that that's the precise, you know, um, recipe for the floaters will be as concise as possible when we talk to MD about this. So, yeah. And then this one. We had the issue yesterday where I was in total overhaul and it did not show the light in the interior. So I feel like we got to just let's take a real quick to journey into potato land and take a look at this. Drith Mora. All right. And I have an ongoing conversation with Detail Devil about performance and how to squeeze every last frame per second out of your game and get a good frame time too. Been playing Fallout 3 and I noticed that game is capped at 30 FPS, but it feels super smooth because the frame time is perfect and perfectly even. So I feel like having a good FPS is important, but having the good frame time equally, if not more important. Detail Devil says, BCOM edits the landscape in Balmora. The saplings are placed on the vanilla landscape. Yeah, indeed, that seems to be the case. MD does, uh, he'll probably just remove those, I think, because I seem to recall in the past he wanted to hear about BCOM incompatibilities, and he would either, uh, you know, move or remove them to a place where BCOM doesn't edit the terrain. So, oh my goodness, here we go. It's time for a sip. We're waiting. Waiting. I can't move my player character. You'll see in a moment. There we go. Boom. I don't know if you saw that red text scroll by. It's the... I mentioned this before. The super nifty plugin that uh, via Lua deletes negative lights. That is... Uh, Nifty, but apparently in a semi-recent build, started doing that, probably due to changes in how the Lua bits work. All right, so let's go inside. It's obviously, it's daytime. It's a little foggy, but it appears to be a clear sky. Uh, we'll use the powers of Todd to make the weather favorable. We should have... Okay, it was lit for a sec. <laughs> so it does work. Okay, I was concerned it wasn't working. There's some exterior reason why it is not working at the moment. Set game hour to 10 p.m. Go back outside. And we did note yesterday that the... Whoa, whoa. That the nighttime glow works just fine. Gonzo asks, when I use TES3 command, I typically put the plugin that needs cleaning. Hold on, let me close my thing. That needs cleaning and the associated dependency in the vanilla data files folder and clean the file in there. Is that a requirement or just a funny thing I do for some reason? That's an excellent question. I do that too. Uh, because if you don't do that, this is what happens. Oh no. All right, hang on. I want to actually have some output here. So, first off, we have a few things going on here. First off, we get this warning, which I think in this case should be an error. Because when you're trying to clean a plugin, what is cleaning? We're removing a change that is a copy of something, a duplicate of something in a master. 
um, how do we know what the master has if it's not in there? So just by it saying can't find data files, that implicitly means that it can't find any other plugins. It can't read Morrowind. But Johnny, how is it, how is it cleaning the evil GMSTs? Those are hard-coded into the script. It just knows they're bad and removes them indiscriminately. You can um, not do that by... Yeah, using the individual R args and just don't use the, um, you know, the GMST. So I think by default, yeah, this is what it does. So you could, instead of, I don't know what the command is to bypass the defaults, but if you didn't want to clean that. So, so anyway, long story short, the reason why you have to do that is so that TS3 command can properly read the masters, see what their records are, and then know, like, what's a dupe, what's a this, what's a that. Now, that having been said... Since we don't care, actually, about all those dirty records, since we only care about evil GMSTs, it's probably not necessary anymore. Um, did it even produce the clean... I'm curious now. Did it even produce a... Yeah, it, I mean, it sure did. It, um... Produce a clean plugin. So, yeah, yeah. Gonzo says, huh, that's an interesting point. Right, it is. <laughs> it's something that I didn't really think of until talking it through here with y'all. Um, but, I mean, we don't we don't need to do that anymore. We only care about evil GMSTs. Well, Johnny, why don't we use Delta plugin to do that? And we just don't need TS3 command anymore. Um, well, that's a great question. I'll explain. Oh, hey, Sophia Sunshine. Thank you so much for joining. I'm glad you're here today. And uh, Sophia says, I just moved TS3 command around personally. Yeah, well, so I'm uh, wondering on this topic of can we use Delta plugins filter command to produce a properly filtered output plugin that's to basically replicate cleaning by way of filtering and i had a, a short conversation with benjamin about it on matrix we didn't really like establish anything yet but it was you know something that is theoretically possible with filtering we would probably need like filtering rules or like a filtering template or something kind of like how ts3 command has it hard-coded in to know about the evil gmsts and it's able to clean them without a morrowind data files folder just fine um I mean, let's let's just prove that right now. We'll clean, no clean. So I mean, yeah, here we go. We got the clean plugin. Um, does it just fine? So your mileage may vary, but Gonzo, I don't think we actually need to do that anymore. I do it too. Detail Devil was doing it. I don't think we need to, since all we care about are evil GMSTs. If you're not using Delta plugin, then you probably do still need to do this. Um, if you're not, excuse me, if you're using another merge tool, if you're using another cleaning tool, if you have a different things you look for to clean, right? Because again, cleaning is somewhat subjective, subjective, uh, you have different things you might consider to be a dupe or not a dupe. I think these are generally all agreed to be things we don't want though, right? You don't want a duplicate record, generally speaking. Delta plugin is smart enough to know what's needed though and does it right, so... Um, yeah. Wow, that was a great question. All right. Going back to the list. That was really uh, that was a really great question. Check that off then. Um, and it's almost time for 6.x stuff, but I do actually want to look at some Python. Let's see here. And yeah, as I said yesterday, I started to work on the CFG generator code. And this is it right here. I don't expect it to get too much more complicated. Um, we have two major parts here. When you use the CFG generator, you are either using a preset or you are selecting from the now empty multiple select box. <laughs> I'm actually sure, not sure why it's empty right now. Uh, we'll figure that out though. The presets... Um, are where we can leverage the things that we're doing with the data, right? This usage note belongs for this mod list, this plugin for that mod list kind of a thing. And where previously we had all kinds of hoops we were jumping through, I had no less than 400 lines of code worth of hacks. I mean, probably more than that. It was horrible. 
if you watched any past stream where I was banging my head against my desk on it, all kinds of terrible code. Right now, we can do, rather than trying to say, oh, if we have this mod, do this, or if we have that mod, do that, we can just say something like this. If this is the total overhaul preset, Firstly, let's take a step back. I swear my language server was working earlier. It's not now. Mm. In the spirit of that, how do we do this? What does it look like? And you'll note, too, that I have a separate field for fallback archives, also known as BSAs, folder paths, ground cover, and plugins. How do we do all of that? Like this. You saw me do this earlier. This is not going to work because we don't yet have the mod data. But this is how, when we know specifically one mod we want the information for, this is how we do that. But how do we get all the plugins just for a mod list? How do we get all just the ground cover for a, just a mod list? Like this. Hey, I did this yesterday. Wow. all the ground cover for total overhaul. Hey, well that's, okay. You may have noticed that's not all of it. We're not finished doing the data. But in theory, this is what, this is how we talk to the database to get that information. Boom, actually just this right here is all we need to get that. We have one direct way to ask the database. That's what we're doing right here. Give me all the ground cover for total overhaul. We don't have to do any thinking about it because we put it into the data. Give me everything. ESMs, ground cover, the whole works, BSA, BSAs, everything. So yeah, anyways, if I want Just the normal content files, boom, just like that. Just that. Back to the code, let's plug it in. And there it is. Just like that. I promised that this code would be boring, and here we are, folks. I think this is properly boring code. Nice, thank you, Gonzo. I see that issue just popped up. Appreciate that. Nice and boring code. Ah, so little that can go wrong. Detail Devil says that's a cool feature. Thank you for uh, noticing, yeah. I think this is gonna be really good for the website. It's going to increase the accuracy of the information we give. It's going to make it easier for people to understand. It will make it easier for other tools, right? If you're making a mod manager and you want to use the data from the website, it will make it easier to, to do that. I encourage people to do that. Yeah, right. Detail Devil correctly says, with every TR update, there'll be updates for the ground cover as well. Yeah, yeah, indeed. That's And more probably, right? Um, they're changing terrain, they're redoing a few regions, so uh, definitely support them in that effort. What they've done and the eastern part looks, you know, stunning. So, uh, all right, we need, uh, uh, B is BSA true? So yeah, like I said, didn't I promise boring code? Here we are. 
<laughs> uh, Sophia says 5.10 is some real work. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Um, and thank you for noticing. And that is a bow. Not too much of a bow because I'll beat my head into the desk, but it's my pleasure. Let's do this. All right. Um, whoa, but what about folder pads? How do we get that? Good question. Let's see here. Mod. Did, eh? what, what did I call that? What did I call that? This is what I'm talking about. Naming earlier. Gonzo says BRB. We'll see you in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember working on this. You know, so... <laughs> Among the pile of hacks that used to be the various parts of code to make up how we show people what to put in their config, saying different uh, paths for your OS was also properly hideous. And now it's just this tiny little bit of code here that's like, you know, a couple of lines right here. But it used to be easily 20 times this much to draw the right slashes for Windows and this slash for Mac and that. You know. <laughs> and uh, just looking at this now makes me happy because it's almost nothing. But anyway, the data model, the reason I opened this file, the data model is called data path. Okay, uh, so data path. Total, I have done this in the past. Hey, there we go. And let's ask the database how many we have. 60 so far. Again, I haven't completely finished this effort yet. It's in progress. 60 data paths. That's pretty cool. What does that look like? That's just a number. <laughs> All right. Uh, we want. Aha. Okay. I see. I remember how to do this. There you go. All right, Gonzo. Welcome back. Just asking the database in one command for all the folder paths for a particular mod list. No big deal. <laughs> Ah, Detail Devil asks, what do you think about tools like Wabajack that can automatically install mods for you? I haven't tried them yet, but I can feel the potential. Let me tell you, I think Wad Wabajack is amazing. I think it's one of the best things to happen to modding because it allows people to easily try things. You know, there's, there's no requirement that you have to, like, I am all about doing it manually. I have my own personal setup that works for me and that I like I wouldn't ever use a Waba Jack it doesn't work for me I'm not you know I'm somebody who's constantly tweaking very low and high level things it wouldn't work for me but right exactly exactly detail devil says I can handle installing 300 mods I wouldn't force it on other people exactly and so I greatly welcome concepts like Waba Jack I welcome friends like okay hi who have taken the initiative to get it to work and others that I don't know about and I'm not naming here. Um, <laughs> hey, Section 8, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, just to, again, my run GCC shirt that I didn't explain, I will explain in a minute. Um, so I love I love Wabajack. I will never use it. It's not for me. I don't like Mod Organizer 2 too much as a piece of software, but, uh, no, you know, uh, lots of folks get great use out of it and uh, I support it. You know, when OK Hi hit me up and asked if he could make a Wabajack from my list, I was like, absolutely you're not the first to ask me definitely the first to pull it off though so yeah i love it it's a great thing um so let me quickly explain my shirt <laughs> run gcc if you're not familiar there's a hip-hop act from the 80s run dmc and this is basically their logo except it was a dmc there and gcc being the gnu compiler collection which is how we build openmw on uh, non-microsoft os's maybe you can use um xcode for it on Mac, I don't know. Um, <laughs> whose house, Gonzo says. <laughs> um, anyways, though, when I was in uh, Boston in 2015 to go see the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones for their hometown throwdown concert with uh, one of my best friends at the time, and we had like about a 12 hour window before our flight on December the 27th spending time in Boston. And so we went to the Free Software Foundation offices because why wouldn't you, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, everybody was gone, actually, because it was so close to the holidays. There was an IT person there and one, probably one other person. Um, but we did get to hang out with the IT person. We had lunch and, and they showed us around. I got to see RMS's um, katana. He has a katana, apparently. Uh, and yeah, so I got this T-shirt and a couple other things and I made a donation 
uh, to the Free Software Foundation because I use Emacs every day, um, and I feel like I should pay for it. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, a little diversion there. Uh, so yeah, how do we how do we get all this stuff that we need like this? The promised boring code is, I think, delivering on the boringness. All right. So back on the subject of Wabajax, though, they don't really have a need for things like the CFG generator. You know, um, they're curated by the maintainers of the Wabajack. Okay, hi. Um, and I got to say, it's been like a really pleasing experience to, no, 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 no. Okay, well, LSP mode is working now. <laughs> it's been pleasing, though, to see all the new users using the Wabajack, seeing them you know give feedback find issues notice the differences between uh playing with openmw in the original engine and it's just been really awesome and i feel like you know openmw and in general any mod project in order to get better we need more users so having more users is good and again the feedback i've gotten from those folks has just been awesome all right here we go ah so nice it takes a minute to warm up, I feel like, versus go, which is just like ready to go, you know, but what can you do? Wait. Yeah, here we go. All right. Yeah, and just looking here, look at this. Specifically mentioning mod lists and mod names and the hacks are already biting me in the face. I can see them. We'll get rid of them now. Uh, okay, we don't need to crunch the database for this. Actually, we can just... Oh. I would like to see the terminal output here. Uh, yeah, for sure. Fane says, I think it's a bit harder to do semantic checks on a language that doesn't have static typing. No doubt. No doubt. Comes with the territory of duck typing of Python. I, you just get spoiled, though, when you go to a language like Rust or C or Go, you know, that's like wham, bam, or Java, probably. All right. Refresh the page. Nothing there. Good, good. All right. Well, I guess what's the easiest way to see what we got is to just see it. I'm going to go ahead and just cram it up there. All right. Good idea. Nothing. Okay. Well, we don't. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. I'm not using a preset. Here we go. Boom. There we go. Nice. Very nice. Ooh, look at it go. <laughs> Very nice. All right, let's, enough playing around. Enough playing around. See, look at, I even had Morrowind hard coded in here. CFG generator used to be incompatible with Fallout. What was I thinking? All right. Attack of the fat finger. Okay. Um, for yeah. Oh, <laughs> we already got that there. All right. Don't get too crazy now. Um. Oh, all right. Little uh, 
too much white space. There we go. Good. Boom. Look at that. That's a preview of things to come, friends. Let's... There we go. Fits in there nice. And so let's erase that preset just as a reminder. There is now nothing there. Looks good, Ifane. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. So um, and what I'll do eventually, I guess, is since now we don't have anything hard-coded there by default, we're just not going to show the BSA, right, the plugins. Like We're just not going to show that by default. So let's do that right now. How do you do that? Like this. We should be able to simply get away with simply saying if fallback archives. And uh, you know, you complain about the, I can complain about the slowness of Python all I want, but this kind of um, duck typing allows a cool kind of expressiveness and syntactical sugar, where I can just say, you know, if fallback archives, draw it. Boom. There we go. Neat. All right. Well, let's, since we're in here, and, uh, and, and another thing too, this is going away. There will be no lines that start with the Octothorpe anymore. There will be no requirement to read and understand exactly what's going in. We are going to give 100% accurate loadouts. None of this is needed. It is a great pleasure to delete this code. Yeah, see, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. So this is the old way, okay? Our old friend Distant Seafloor, excellent mod by our old friend Himeris. Hack Central Gonzo says, you got it, dude. Look at this. Special mention of our friend's mod here, though. Uh, special mention of the Morrowind data files. And then this, just like, yo, whoa. Got some crazy plugin filtering, uh, template filtering going here. <laughs> I mean, this is hard for me to understand, and I wrote it. So I'm very happy to delete it. Pfft, gone. Again, with the boring code. Blam, all gone. We'll need to... Um, selectively render this too. I won't do that right now. Ah, ha, ha, Sophia, it's funny you mentioned CFG generator going to be the new MLOCs in 2090. We'll see what happens. All right. So how do we put something in there when we have something though? Let's do that. Clearly we have plugins. How do we show them? More boring code. No more hacks. Todd would not approve OpenMW fork. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I don't know who told you that. <laughs> okay. See what I did? Tried to close. What was I thinking? I tried to close off my four with an end if. <sighs> Maybe I should re-explore using HTML language server. Hey, Fane, I'm curious if you do any HTML coding yourself, if you use a HTML language server. There's like six of them, and I couldn't find one that didn't like when I save the file, like change all my formatting in, in ways that I would never do myself that make it hard to write. Um, and so I'm wondering if you use a particular or anybody else uses a HTML language server that's any good and not overly opinionated. I just want like good completion and let me know when I goof. Like it would be nice if it was aware of Jinja templates or something. 
Anyways. Okay, very good, very good. We're getting there, at least. Still not quite right, though. It's going to be a database hit for each one of these, but uh, no big deal. We'll take a look at our trusty only two queries. Now that is suspect. No joke. There it is. This is the most optimized code I've ever written in my life. <laughs> wow. Crazy. The old version of this used to chug a lot. I don't know if you remember from old streams. And now it's like practically instant. Okay. Yeah. A faint says, nope. Sorry. It's all good. Just thought I would ask anybody who has a suggestion. Otherwise, maybe I'm going to have to do a. You know how sometimes you're testing OpenMW Morrowind mods and you're trying them out and going to have to do that with Emacs mods. No big deal. No big deal. Wow, I just can't get over how fast this is. And just two queries. All right, we're on a roll. We're dipping into the 6.x time, and I hope you all don't mind. Give me the data paths. That's so sweet. Okay. Where's the info name? Yeah, there we go. Just a little, I don't like having that extra white space at the very bottom. Consistent padding. There we go. That bugged me. <laughs> CSS and HTML, the combination. Okay, so. Plugin section. Folder. Data. What did I even call this? Folder paths. What are you doing, Johnny? I'm going back to the name. Data paths. That way I can, I have to change less. <laughs> you can write wild SQL queries though. Yeah, cool, okay. Yeah, are you talking about in that, uh, Afane says, uh, is that in what you do, what you normally write, working with SQL and stuff? It could be fun. It can be, SQL can be strangely satisfying. Like when I first started to get joins and stuff, it was like galaxy brain moment. Like, wow. All right. Let's delete this. We don't have a switch mob. I tried to have a switch mob list at one point. Bad idea. I feel like this is going to get deleted, but I'll leave it there for now. Look at this. See? Just everywhere we look. Hacks. 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 Everywhere we look. And the native bands. Yeah, see, we don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> I guess we just simply will not give True Nights and Darkness a data path. Begs the question, though. How do we present such mods? I suppose, because it's strictly fallback values, right? What do you mean by fallback value, Johnny? I mean this. True Nights... These things. These are the values that the setup process for OpenMW takes from Morrowind.ini that are configuration parameters for the engine. Things like lighting, weather, and all that. True Nights and Darkness, 
is one such mod that exists purely as fallback. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Detail Devil asks, Shader Graphics Mod. Yeah, so kind of, but it uh, itself is configured just as these fallback values. And so I believe at present, let's take a look. How do we present this? I don't know how we show this now. Yeah, okay, extra configs. That's right. So I wonder if, how we would handle these any differently, if at all. I'm gonna think about that for a second while I lower my desk down. It's a good moment for, uh, for a sip. I don't know. I think for now, I think this is okay. Because we can do Oh, wait. So, hmm, yeah, I feel like, I think extra, a script to replace the lines could be helpful, uh, Sophia Sunshine says. I'm sorry, uh, can you elaborate what you mean? Do you mean a script to replace the lines like uh, in here? Oh, you mean in the, okay, in the config actually, yeah, right. So that's something I feel like a, mod manager or a launcher front end type thing could do absolutely maybe perhaps theoretically totally of course theoretically some kind of a mod aware mod friendly open mw launcher would do that that's a really good call out um for now what i would like to do as i've been talking to y'all here about this i've decided let's see here Yeah, list. What I would like to do is represent these in the same way that we're representing all the other specific extra information related to a mod. Yeah, we're not even doing it. So what I want to do is let's do it right now. We're going to make another data table for extra configs and we're going to have it be properly boring code because even if we leave it the way it is now there's going to be hacks and we're trying to have completely hack free code here so let's do it we're making a brand new data field for this stuff okay and so extra cfg probably doesn't we could probably honestly just copy pasta the whole model for usage notes and just make a couple of changes here, right? Extra uh, CFG. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Typo city over here. There we go. We'll call it extra uh, config. All right. This, if you're wondering, the underscore thing here, this is a some internationalization function for Django. Eventually, I would love to support other languages, and we could do that. Um, present the website, you know, in multiple localizations. I would love to do that. And past me, <laughs> thought about that. All right, uh, extra, con extra config. 
All right. Pretty cool. All right, there it is. So now we're going to do something like this. I'm pondering what data format do we want to do this in? What <laughs> do we want to subject ourselves to more Tamil or more YAML or worse, something else? These are the questions that keep me up at night, folks. I'm thinking it's got to be Tamil because YAML is going to force some awkward indents on us. Tom will force awkward escaping of double quotes, but that's not as awkward as the indents. Uh, Detail Devil says, most of the mods add English content. I assume that having it in English won't cause many problems. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And if we take a quick look... I have the page that has the most scrolling down of any of them. If we take a quick look, though, we can see that in the past week, by a rather large margin... Traffic is coming from the United States. So I think it's okay that we're just English. But if somebody wanted to, like, add a Deutsch translation of something, you know, obviously that would be a lot of work. And we wouldn't do something like that lightly. We wouldn't want to half-ass that, you know. Um, we, we should, you know, be open to do that, though. And I'm definitely open to doing that. But, again, that's a lot. We're talking about a lot of work. And so that's something we would plan accordingly. But something I thought about, right? Just something I thought about. Okay. Now. So, yeah, we're going to use Tamil for this, I've decided. An extra. And Gonzo, I think the way it's going to work, and her drags too, in case you watch this later on, we're going to do it like we have the usage notes where it's going to be one big file Tamil soup, and um, hopefully we don't hate ourselves too much a couple years down the road. In which case, we can do yet another glorious refactor. All right, sounds good. Let's do it. Okay, but wait, what is the data supposed to look like? Uh, good question. Good question. Let's just get ourselves an example here. Yeah, this one. And we're going to make a couple changes. So right now, I had a thought. Right now, we have two different forms of extra CFG. Gonzo, I'm okay with Tomal Soup. Cool, man. Me too. We're going to have to be. We can't deliberate on these kinds of things too much. It's brain power wasted. Um, so we have two fields for extra CFG at present. And I think I'm going to cut this down to just one. What's the difference between the two? One of them has HTML. That'd be this one. And one of them is just raw. No HTML, just plain text. We're going to go with just plain text. Keep the presentation of this thing consistent, not duplicate the information. Because yeah, we have the, effectively the same content twice on every mod. It's... Like if we look at, uh, this is embarrassing, but let's look at this. Lighting, okay. Poodle sandwich, I miss you, dude. Yeah, so look at this. Extra CFG, part one. All this, oh yes, there's more. Cool, we're done, right? No, we have the exact same information actually in a slightly different format again. <sighs> yeah, we're not doing that. That is not happening. So instead, what we will do again is just we'll preserve the raw. Um, we'll preserve the raw value and we can dress it up uh, is with HTML as needed and also just made me think of we are going to need 
oh my gosh, if I can type, we're going to need to know is this settings or an OpenMW CFG tweak, right? Because some things, we have two different kinds of extra configs, actually. Hack City, I told you. Number one are the kind that we've already talked about that we've just been looking at fallback values that go into the OpenMW CFG. But what are the other kinds? Other kinds include things like ground cover settings that go into the settings file. This will no longer be a thing. We have a proper representation for ground cover plugins, so this will be erased. But this... So, we're going to do this. In settings. And I'm basically going to have a field that is a Boolean field, meaning true or false. Models. Excuse me. Need a quick sip. You going to do it? No? Okay. I was hoping to get a... There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. Boolean field which is effectively yes or no, true or false. And I'm going to say, is it in the settings file? If yes, yes. If no, in OpenMW CFG. Only one of two places it can be in. Ah, and since I'm in here, let's go ahead and nuke this. Goodbye. All right. Now back to here. What do we got? True nights and darkness. Hold up. This isn't right either. Extra. See, uh, I mean, that could be. This can be whatever I want it to be. In the interest of it making sense to somebody reading it, we're going to call it CFG. What mod lists is this on, even? Quite a few. One, including one day. Someday. I don't know if it's possible now, because I don't know jack squat about shaders. But I feel like we could do a nice approach on uh, nighttime tweaks with shaders, potentially. But again, I don't know anything about that. I could be talking smack. I'm just a dreamer, man, but I'm not the only one. All right. Yeah, we're gonna and we're gonna put this in here, just plain text, and we can leave the formatting. I don't know what past me was thinking. <sighs> I didn't have the benefit of hindsight, I guess. Mm. Oh my. All right. Just the hacks keep coming up left and right. Gonzo says making it darker depending on a distance, kind of like a fog war of war thing, could be really good as long as you could light it up. That is an interesting idea, actually. Hmm. Interesting take on fog even as like a mechanic and not just a visual. We have to carry... No, we don't. What am I thinking? I'm saying, I hear I'm about to tell you that we have to carry a hack. We're presenting this information for the mod list. So that means for people not using the mod list, we're going to need to tell them to use all of them. How do we do that? Like this. No hacks. Boring. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I think this is a pretty... This was a good example that I happened to pick. Ah, Detail Devil. Man after my own heart. I like pitch black nights. They're realistic. It should be inconvenient to travel at night without a torch. I agree. That's exactly how I love to play um, 
you know, when I play Fallout, New Vegas, Fallout 3, I like the nights to be dark. And indeed, Morrowind too. I like the torches to be really useful, you know. Um, I shared that Waza light fixes with you yesterday. And that's another way that you can kind of... I, I view that as like a modern alternative to true nights and darkness, right? Because that thing reads your load order. It adjusts uh, lighting in the cells according to your load order. And um, true nights and darkness doesn't quite do that, you know. Um, so anyway, yeah. We're going to have to have a stream dedicated to just discussion and analyzing these kinds of things. Because, um, yeah, highly fascinating. You know, I don't know how Poodle came up with these numbers. You know, what was that process like? Actually, in a private conversation, Poodle expressed to me that he was not happy with how this looks in snowy areas, right? Because you'd have the moonlight kind of illuminating the snow a little bit, and you don't get that effect from this. And that's a valid point. But I don't think it negates the awesomeness of this mod. That's something, though, I feel like we could do that with shaders right now, potentially. Again, I don't know jack squat about shaders. So somebody who does is going to have to rescue us. Awesome. All done, right? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We put this data in here, but we're not doing anything with it. As of right now, the website doesn't use it. We need to change that. And we're going way into the 6.x. I'm going to wrap this up quick, and then we'll go into that. But this has just been a lot of fun. Hey, I am Dimedez. Welcome. And uh, thank you for joining the stream. It might be one of those things that is cool in theory, but a huge pita in practical to play. Might be something for hardcore mode. Oh, and are you talking about like a dark, very, very dark um, night kind of thing? I agree. Um, you know, it might not be. I, I know some folks just aren't into that, you know, and for sure. That's why I think it's great that we're going to present this information in such a way where, you know, you're doing a mod list and you're like, I don't exactly want this. We'll make it easy for people to exclude it. And um, so, yeah, that's a good call out. And thank you. Uh, thank you for being in the chat and thank you for joining the stream. I'm glad you're here. And a very, very, again, good call out. So, um, yeah, and we'll go over that once the CFG generator rewrite is done. I'll go over here in a stream and we'll make a video and we'll show people like, well, how, Johnny, how do I customize a mod list to remove things that I don't like? And I'll show you how. There are some mods like Titty's Landscape Retexture, a few of the Russian Titty's mods, that I feel like we could suggest the UHQ textures for total overhaul. Same with the one that replaces Vivek Cantons. Is this fixed in 5.10, says Sophia Sunshine. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, it absolutely could be. Is it fixed right now? So for those ones, I think we would represent that with a, we would have a usage note saying to download the UHQ version, and then we would have a folder path. And let's see if we have that right now. If not, we should. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's attain. Okay, so we don't have specific ones for that. Yeah, nothing yet. That's a really good suggestion, uh, Sophia. And wow, chat's going blown up right now. I'll try to catch up. Uh, we'll put that on the list here. And I'll have to uh, study my own load order. But if that doesn't find its way in 5.10, it will in 6.x for sure. Uh, and yeah, I am Dan Des says, thanks, yeah, this is a lot to take in at once. I have a fair amount of game dev experience. Never in this context, I had to Google what Tama was. Definitely exciting. Looking forward to getting into modding OpenMW. Awesome. Uh, cool. I'm so glad that you found the stream and that you're here. And yeah, this is what we do. You know, a little bit of hacking on the website, a little bit of playing on the engine. Um, Yesterday, we were actually looking at uh, section. our friend Section 8 uh, made a turn-based combat mod for Morrowind. Gonzo says, maybe important to include a disclaimer about VRAM there. Not really sure about the delta between memory usage, though. Excellent call out. Um, big time. So when we so this is why it's important to have usage notes for these because and also to make it easy to exclude things because um, if you are on, like, for example, a Steam Deck, maybe you don't want the UHQ option, right? That thing has limited VRAM. Detail Devil says, that's a good point. It's the same for Crystal Clear Water. Good for gameplay, not exactly realistic. If I jumped into the local river, you won't see much. That's right. 
actually in my quest for performance, I was playing around with various water settings. And uh, if you disable refraction, that's more or less what you get, right? You get like crystal clear, clean water, which with the ripples actually kind of looks interesting. It's reminiscent of vanilla Morrowind EXE water. Um, Sophia, I'll make an issue related to the ones I use later. Thank you. That would be a really helpful. I appreciate that. Um, and then maybe you're using some ones I'm not, so it would be good uh, to compare. Um, but yeah, so so uh, VRAM disclaimer. All right, nice. Okay. Um, I know I said I was going to wrap this up, and we're doing that. <laughs> Data seeds. Okay, so what do I got in here? We got a couple of good usage notes. Okay, so let's usage notes. We're gonna extra CFG. All right. Ah, it's a little bit of a relief to look at this. Hey, Zach. Welcome. I'm glad you're here, my man. What's up? I'm glad you can make it. We're just hacking on CFG generator, making things, making life easy for. All the poor souls trying to join our community. But yeah, welcome. I hope you're having a great day. I hope everybody's having a great day. And uh, yeah, I was just saying, it makes me happy to look at this because we're going from horrible, hideous code that passed me wrote in probably a drunken stupor to code that is succinct and not hacky. I love it. I'm just kidding. I don't write code drunk. I don't actually drink. I feel like writing code drunk would be really hard. <laughs> That's a funny thought. Okay, so what are we doing here? Drunk on lack of sleep. There you go. Now that, Section 8 says, <laughs> now that is something I can relate to. Drunk on lack of sleep, for sure. All right, so we're just basically, since the extra config data format I just created is very similar to usage notes, we can just, you know, copy pasta that, more or less. What did I even call it? Extra CFG. Uh, extra CFG. Yeah, and so most of this still applies. Mod lists. Text. Ah, wait. We need to we need to factor one th more thing here though. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> we got a classic XKCD here, shared by a fame. Thank you. Let's pull this one up. And let's enjoy a slight diversion. <laughs> oh, we don't get the hover text, unfortunately, but wow. Um... I'm not going to pull it up, but I'm just thinking about Steve Ballmer video where he's yelling developers while sweating like a madman, screaming on stage. <sighs> Good times. I love this company. <laughs> if you haven't seen that video, just look up sweaty Steve Ballmer on any search engine. I'm sure you'll find it. All right, so we this is a in settings um just wondering to myself how many of these extra configs are in settings and how many are in the C open mw cfg i actually have no idea let's take a quick look it'll be nice to kind of erase some of these and make this seem like less of a buggy crappy function of the website it's growing up all right let's hit the preset here You don't even need to do this, by the way, in 0 0.49, I learned recently. you don't. It's built in. Thank you to Andre Kartanov. Don't even need to do that. So on a quick scan, it seems probably half and half, honestly. So I'm going to default it to false. And if something needs to go in the settings, we'll flip that bit. We'll turn it on. 
Oh, uh, okay. So in settings. All right. Looking good. Ooh, since Zach is here, I feel like I should show the controller GUI. Do you mind if I show that, Zach? If I go grab my Switch controller and we take a look at that controller GUI, I totally wanted to do that yesterday. I won't show it if you don't think it's ready, though. All right, cool, sweet. Let's check out this controller GUI. I'm going to go get my Switch Pro controller. Yeah, it's so, just a disclaimer, this is a work in progress. It needs work, Zach says correctly. The MR that DHAR codes the UI will enable this to be perfect. Okay, maybe not perfect, but you know, we'll have all the things it doesn't have now. I'm gonna go grab my Switch Pro Controller. Be right back. Switch Pro. I dig this controller. It's quite nice. Do I like it more than PS4 controller? I don't know. I've never played a PS5. I've never played an X-Bone controller. I heard X-Bone controllers are good. I got a Switch. So I'm using this. And at some point... Linux became able to just work with these things out of the box. So I just plug it in and it just works. Section 8 says, the Elite controllers are nuts. Uh, I use a Tartarus though. Okay, so I have a buddy who's an Xbox fanboy. And he was raving about the Elite controller and I just chalked it up to fanboyism and didn't believe him. <laughs> but maybe it is actually good then. So that's cool. My jam for controller, well, I don't use controller much, is um, a PS4 controller, a DualShock 4. Um, but I've been playing mostly on Steam Deck, and I absolutely love the form factor of that thing. Um, absolutely love that. I don't think I have any complaints about it. So anyway, though, yeah, this is already in a really... I think it's looking really good. Um, Zach, props. And once the... We've looked at it a few times on the stream. We can go look at it in a moment. Once the UI dehard coding MR is merged, then, you know, bam, it's on. Hey, uh, Pablo Marken, Marken, Markendo. Pablo Marcando, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I think I recognize you from an issue on GitLab, so I'm so glad that you're on the stream. Thank you for joining. And uh, Pablo says, I'm looking for a controller for couch gaming with my Steam Deck in a dock. So I use a PS4 controller for that purpose. Um, some people don't like how the PS4 controller has the the analog right here, so it's lower rather than higher. Probably look at getting an Xbox Elite or um, try a Switch Pro controller even. Uh, if Ain says, I still use an Xbox 360 controller. <laughs> ah, wow. That was a classic pad though, honestly. Um, Zachogenic says, also need the use objects function so you can drink potions and stuff like that from the GUI, right? So we'll probably get this thing in a couple phases. Right now, this is what we're about to see here is the alpha phase when the UI gets de-hard coded. Um, that will be like the maybe the beta phase. And then once we get more functionality, like being able to drink potions, you know, that will be beyond too. Um, oh, okay, Pablo, my bad. Sorry, I thought I recognized your name. <laughs> In any case, again, welcome. And yeah, Gonzo says, 8-Bit Do has some good options for classic style chassis. Agreed. I have, for classic games, I've got a couple 8-Bit Do replicas for Super Nintendo. I've got retro bit replicas of Saturn, Sega Saturn controllers. They're officially licensed by Sega, actually. And they feel good. Um, but yeah, it depends on, so if you're wanting to play on your Steam Deck, that could work well for like emulators and stuff. If you're looking to play something like OpenMW, probably want to look at a Switch Pro or a Xbox One um, or PS4 if you're into uh, you know PlayStation style controllers. All right, get on with it, Johnny. I'm doing it. 
<clears throat> All right, here we go. All right. So note at the top of the screen, we've got the different kind of menu selections. Um, controls is not listed well. Yeah, uh, no doubt. Probably when the UI is de-hard-coded, as uh, Zach just mentioned, you cannot, there's, we can't have hints about the controls. When the UI is de-hard-coded, I imagine that won't be an issue. But um, yeah, so I'm hitting the, the R and L buttons to toggle between the things at the top there. And then if I use the D-pad, I can like, I think it's, yeah, Y, I can equip and unequip things, I think. Oh, we can, you just didn't add it yet. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Pablo says, the PlayStation controllers have the touchpad, right? Sounds nice to have a cursor sometimes. Absolutely, they do, they do. It's part of the reason why I went for a PS4 controller. Um, a PS5 controller has it also. Uh, need to bind your normal menu button to B to back that is. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, Zach. So I'm missing some requirement here to properly equip um, and to also get out of the... Right? Yeah. So anyway, this is not a, this is not a proper demo. I apologize. <laughs> but you get the gist, though. You can see what is possible here. Um, we have... The UI of selecting the different menus at the top, we have the, and then the different menu realize at the bottom. X equips A drops. Okay. So I'm like used to playing Super Nintendo games on a Steam Deck and the buttons are reversed, but now I actually have a Nintendo controller and the buttons are not reversed. Let's drop this. No. Oh, yeah. So I probably don't have the controls mapped properly. Okay, so I hit Y on the Switch controller and it's adding those stars. What's that do, Zach? Why favorites them? Okay, cool, favorite. Wow, that's a cool feature you got already up in here. That's cool, man. Yeah, Sophia says, this is so cool, right? Uh, that's why I'm super hyped. All right, now let's take a moment. Any of y'all know C++? D-pad down will open the faves menu. Okay, so I happen to have bound my D-pad to the quick actions for use on my Steam Deck. And I reckon that'll conflict with this probably. Let's take a look. Now, if you happen to be in the crowd and you happen to know C++, we need you, friends. This feature is awaiting review. Excuse me, I clicked the wrong thing. Mm. Oh my, it's not even on the first page. <clears throat> Control GUI from Lula, here we go. We need some reviews on this one. It looks like Erm might have jumped on this. But this is going to be, when this drops, this will enable Zach the Wizard to bring us the controller GUI that we've wanted. Uh, I think I saw Mothpot asking for a replica of the Xbox GUI, and I really need to fire that up in an emulator or something, because I haven't played the Xbox Morrowind in like 21 years. I don't even really remember what that looks like. I think it would probably be worth replicating for nostalgia purposes, but I like what you cooked up. Resolved all threads one day ago. I feel like I actually am a maintainer on the OpenMW project, and if I wanted to, okay, I'm not an approver. Wait, I can approve. I'm not going to do that, though. It's, you know, not correct to do that. But if somebody has, uh, you know, C++ knowledge and wants to take a peek at this, otherwise, this is really going to, this is going to be next level. I'll be able to make, like, a, for example, natural character growth and decay. We got that decay menu. 
can't pause the game. I mean, we could make it do that now if we wanted. Uh, Sophia says the Xbox GUI is all right. You can't manually place items at all with how it's set up. Oh, okay, right, yeah, because that wasn't a thing, right? It just, you put it at your feet. And the loot bag, I forgot about the loot bag. <laughs> Someone was playing at an XMU in MMC a couple of days ago. It hurts so bad. Yeah, I saw people, like, I guess on Xbox One, you can buy the Xbox version on, like, their marketplace. And, and people are playing the game that way, which is like, hey, respect. That's cool, but wow. <laughs> Zach Janik says, I wanted to make it exactly like the Xbox window, but making it functional and look goodish is the primary. Yes, I appreciate that. You know, and again, maybe there can be like a separate mode for like the super classic. It's on Game Pass. Cool, cool. All right. Um, so in the emulator, I have XMU, I think it is. I have it on my Steam Deck. I was playing Halo and GTA San Andreas when I first got my Steam Deck, but Morrowind would never boot. Wouldn't run. So... Um, yeah. Nice. Wow. So here we go. I'm super hyped about this. Looks like Peter, our friend Peter, I'm not sure, by the way, if I pronounce your name wrong, by the way. I don't know how you say that, and I'm so sorry if I say it wrong. But Peter here, you know, uh, oh, no, Andre Kartanov even resolved this. So, I mean, I think this is imminent to be merged, I feel like, and that's a real exciting thing. Um, 0 0.49 is going to be so exciting. I've been closely involved with the releases since 0 0.46, and at the time, that was a mind-blowing release. We had glow-in-the-dark support, we had graphic herbalism, you know, we were... Andre Kartanov made some impressive optimizations to distant terrain. I thought, how can it be better than this? And then 47, and then 48, and now 49, you know? So, I mean, props to all the devs and on the team, and just, you people are amazing. And I love you all. All right. Let's go back to the list. We went all over the place today. Holy moly. Didn't look at this. Um, it's either this or this. We're going to take a look at 6.x stuff because actually Detail Devil shared with me a lot of really cool stuff yesterday. And I wanted to uh, specifically look at one of them. Um, Section 8, this one's for you because you said that you're still getting up to date with graphical stuff. And this is some eye candy that will probably dazzle you. All right, here we go. Where are you going, Johnny? I don't know. You'll see. Hold up. <laughs> Pardon me. This is one of those I didn't know that I needed it things. And I think those are some of the nicest additions. Okay. We're real struggling real bad right now. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Oh, that's right. I can't move yet. We got to look into this before we launch 6.x. Slideshow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pablo, okay. Just checked. You have one commit for OpenMW a while ago. I got a good memory for names, apparently. But I somehow recognize your name. So and in any case, glad you're here. We will not be a slideshow for long. Please bear with me. Well, it'll be higher than 8 FPS at least. So actually, we're going to get a look at two things that Detail Devil kindly shared with me. Number one, in the category of things I didn't know I needed, but do. Whoa, what's up with that fire there? It looks like it's actually burning. And hopefully you can see there we've got the firewood is actually burning. How about that? That's pretty good. So, yeah, props, Detail Devil, and to the author of that one, who we will reveal when we add it to the list. But the one that I really wanted to show for Mr. Section 8 is this. The Propylon Particles 
Logs on fire. Thank you, Detail Devil. Mod is called Logs on Fire. Indeed, look it up on Nexus. But this is, so this is the replacer for the propylon particles. And I don't know. I just love it. And I think this scene in particular, in here, this uh, cramped slideshowy room. Yeah, and and then we got our eight, 4K Telvani crystal replacers that we looked at yesterday at the end of the stream. You got strongholds normal mapped, you know. Just these room. Uh, Gonzo asks, do these particles appear around the indexes or also or just the rooms? I love this. Yeah, it appears to be. Uh, I mean, I've only actually looked at it in this room, so this is the only one I've seen. Okay, thank you, Detail Devil. Only in these rooms. Could probably do it with shaders or something. Um, <sighs> yeah, right. Uh, I am dimed as says very cool not 10 gold in the pockets of the people there meanwhile t 10,000 gold worth of crystals indeed yeah that's one of those um moments in the game you got to suspend your disbelief a little bit but uh we'll just pretend the crystals grew out of the ground I'm sure that happened in Vardenfell makes those pesky things easier to find yeah might make those pesky things easier to find for sure you could do that with shaders actually um our friend Ezzy, who made the Guardhounds mod, was talking about doing such a mod for keys. He wanted to, like, make them glow a little bit uh, interesting. So, all right. Well, that was a fun look at some visual stuff. And we'll go ahead and add that one, I guess, to the plan here. Improved Propylon Particles. By Markle. Thank you so much. And nice work. I love this. I'm going to click that thumbs up. I didn't know I needed it, but I do. And I'm putting this under the VFX category. Anybody has any feedback about that, let me know. But I think it works for VFX, honestly. Section 8 says, I spent like half the stream debugging an issue in Baldurwind that wasn't there. Chasing gremlins. I've been there for sure. Talk about any session of working with the CFG generator. Thank you, Gonzo. Says, particles and VFX make sense. Cool. Sanity check. Yeah, any, time, any amount of time spent working with some of the hacks in this website code base kind of made me feel a little insane, like I was chasing phantom issues that aren't there but are. Anyways, here we go. Nice. Gosh, this issue has just become huge. I mean, look at this. Are we nuts? <laughs> look at all this. And this isn't everything. It's close. I feel like we're really close. But this isn't everything. There's at least 50 other things that got to get added here. <laughs> Gonzo says six thick. Yeah, indeed. Six dot thick. It's very thick with two Cs. As the kids say, I heard. I'm an old person. I don't know about those lingos. Oh, man. All right. Well. What else? We were looking at the logs on fire. Logs on fire. Nexus mods. This was a really good one. One of those ones when I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I need this. Section 8. It was just a mud crab trying to catch up with me. <laughs> okay, so you're probably doing some stuff where you're looking at, you know, trying to figure out if you're in combat and you need to pause the game. Mud crab throwing a wrench in there for you. This one. Uh, we will not donate right now, but I encourage you to donate to the creators on Nexus. This one has to load after improved lights for all shaders, which actually provides the log, texture, and mesh. Uh, so we will note that uh, when we add it into the website database. But for now, it lives in my head. Really, it's just a testament for how healthy and wild TES3 modding is right now, Gonzo says. Yeah, agreed. 
agreed uh speaking about the huge list of things some of these have been around for a while a couple of years but a lot of these are quite new including some excellent stuff by you know our friend zach um a fane there's a couple by a fane in here you know section eight we're gonna put uh in our interesting suggestions section i feel like balderwind would fit really well in there you know so logs on fire where did i put that in my config Objects and clutter. Okay. Could probably go under the lighting category, I would think, actually. is probably a better place for it. Mm. We're going to do that. And yeah, this is a bit of a new one too. Uh, just a little over a year old, you know, a year and a half. Just kind of fell out of nowhere. Thank you, M.W. Geck. I believe M.W. Geck made the... Didn't we? Before I say, yeah, Hanging Gardens of Saran. Another really lovely one. Just lovely. I'm a kind of guy who likes to stop and smell the flowers in life, you know? And so I appreciate a mod that adds flowers. Cool. There we go. What else? I don't know. Let's see here. Okay. Wesley's face is refurbished. I actually have to see where this one fits in the load order, but this is another one that Detail Devil kindly shared with me about. And so in my own setup, I put this one after the Wesley's plug in plug head replacer complete and the related fix, but before Danae's Wesley's master head pack prim and proper. And now I guess a further action item here is to look and see at the validator output, you know, what interacts with this? What files is this giving to us? Um, and then we can check the quality in game and see is this something that we really like. But uh, I thank you for the recommendation for sure. And here it is. Faces refurbished. Certainly these pictures look really good. We got Mage's Robes here, another 6.x edition looking really good. But yeah, these, I mean, these all look nice. That's a familiar face. That too. So we'll just get in-game and take a look at them and make sure. But I feel like this is going to be a strong addition. Oh, and look at that. We're just about out of time. How about that? I also wanted to have time to do a new release of Natural Character Growth and Decay Lua Edition. Managed to add a couple of bugs into that one, unfortunately, that are now fixed. So we're going to do a release, but I'll do that after the stream. All right. Well. There we go. Okay. It's about time. I thank everybody for joining. It was a very fun, productive day. I look forward to seeing you all next week. And uh, happy modding. Cheers. <laughs>